live from New York City, it's theCUBE. Covering Lenovo Transform 2.0. Brought to you by Lenovo. Welcome back everyone. We are wrapping up day one of coverage of Lenovo Transform here in New York City. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight, along with my co-host, Stu Miniman. We have a final guest, Peter Hortensius. He is the Senior Vice President, Data Center Group, and CTO and Chief of Strategy. Thanks so much for coming on theCUBE, Peter. Well, thanks for having me. It's your first time. I, I was told, I can't believe after all these years, it's my first it's time. Kinda it's kind of true. It's, <laughs> if, you're, if you're in this industry, you're going to be on a lot more after this, trust okay. me. So, before the cameras were rolling, we were talking about how cloud is an outcome, not a destination. Yes. What, what do you mean by that? And do you think that is your perspective? Or is that, is that uh, do you think that that is industry-wide? Well, the way the to me it's really, well, there are people in the industry who do think of it as the destination. My life will be good when. <laughs> but the reality is when I talk to our customers and I talk to you know, business owners on what they're really looking for, what they're looking for is a way and a method of working. And you know, they're looking for how do I deploy things quickly? How do I worry more about can my applications run properly, not you know, how many petabytes of storage that I need for this or how many VMs did it take to run that? And so for us, it's all around trying to provide advice and counsel around that. And you know, we found an interesting, uh, an interesting statistic that sort of justified things we're hearing from a lot of customers, which is while everybody has a strategy of what do they get to the cloud? Eight out of 10 customers are trying to think about the things they need to bring back. So it's not just a one-way street, right? Which tells you it's definitely not a destination if people are telling you, hey, there's a few things I put in there that may not be the best place for it. Yeah, it, it, it's interesting, because you know, in general, I'd agree with you. I think we, we've said it is more of an operating model, uh, and the, there's processes there. Uh, when I evaluate companies and analysts, it's, a lot of times it's like, okay, but tell me where your positioning is. If I give you private cloud and public cloud, do you have a real heavy leaning one way, or a bias towards one or the other? Of course, the big public cloud providers tend to lead that way, even though most of them are shifting not just all public, but you know, even Amazon is getting you know, deeper into what yeah. they're doing in private cloud. One of the things I like about Lenovo is we're talking about hyperscale, we're talking about HPC, uh, we're talking about all the various pieces. So you know, in your portfolio of offering, you know, you're selling solutions into you know, the Big Ten cloud guys, so you know, you're not only saying, you know, well, you know, no, public cloud's bad, you know, do there. So you have a measured uh, approach to how that looks, and I, I think pragmatic as to how the customer's well, going to be. It, you're right, I mean, we do sell into six of the top 10 public clouds in the world, right? Yeah. Enormous volumes and all the things. So we understand what it takes to do those environments well. But, you know, we also have this huge business, you know, that we sell to people on premise, and they want to all move to public clouds and private cloud technology and hybrid and multi-cloud, and I can give you a hundred other acronyms. And you know, the challenge is, you know, people just want to run their business. And this is you know, not running my business. This is a cost of doing business. And so for me, it's really around how do we provide them simple ways to get there. And I think Lenovo, because of its legacy free heritage, you know, we, we don't have a big business tied up in the old way of doing things. We can be a much more simpler vendor to work with because, okay, you want to take that to the public cloud? I get it, it makes sense. You know, I sell to them, they're my customers, so I'm, I'm still okay. I'm not hung up that, no, 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 I really don't think that's what you want to be doing. And then vice versa, when they want to look at private cloud technologies or hybrid technologies or multi-cloud technologies, you know, again, I'm very, I have multiple ways of supporting that because I'm not hung up on, well, you need to buy this much storage for me of exactly this kind or, you know, I'm there. So we see way too many of our competitors have a story with their customers. It sounds really good when the executive talks to them, but the regional sales manager is going like, no, 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 you don't understand. We got to sell this or I'm done. Yeah. And so what happens? They don't sell the, the new thing. Right, and one of the challenges I mean, customers have is they tend to do multiple things. It's, you know, they start out with a simple idea, but you know, new applications and different business units pull things together. So they're looking for partners that can help keep them up to date as to what's happening and help them focus on the, the outcomes of their business, focus on the applications, and help them try to keep up in an ever-changing world. So maybe uh, you know, give us a little bit as to how the portfolio view from Lenovo helps customers uh, Yeah, you know, so keep we, up. Look at, we look at the, you know, call it the on-ramp to the cloud, right? They're, 
there is, you know, people want to build up their private clouds and hybrid clouds from all the parts. They're well skilled, well capable, or for whatever reason they decide to do that. So we have a portfolio of products that can support you to do that all the way from our Think System line. So all the building blocks, and then working closely with partners like Red Hat and so on. And you know, you carry all the way through the continuum of you know true turnkey solutions. You know, you had Naj and uh, Rod on earlier, and they were really talking about a turnkey solution that we've just recently brought out with, with Naj's company. But you know, Microsoft's Azure and Azure Stack is another example of a turnkey hybrid cloud. We're, you know, as, for, as Kirk mentioned in his keynote, four times our regular market share in that market, because again, we're perfectly happy to sell that. And then the big software to find on ramp with Nutanix and VMware and a bunch of others that people have, that's another on ramp to the cloud. It's again another place where we have a lot of growth, and we've been growing at, you know, we've doubled our share basically every year, year on year share comparison every quarter for the last six quarters. So we're perfectly happy going at it in all three of those paths, and uh, it works very well for us. I want to get back to, to the, the idea of, uh, you just started by saying customers at the end of the day just want to run their businesses, they want, and they want mm -hmm. things to be easy and intuitive. So, how would you, would you say that customers are? thinking that way about the cloud, or is this, or is there this pressure of, I got to get to the cloud, I've got to have a cloud strategy? I, I think there is some of that, I got to get to the cloud, because it's in vogue, and if I'm not getting right. to the cloud, you know, my CEO's right. going to think cool. that I'm, well, worse than not cool, I'm not confident, right? That's much worse. <laughs> so, um, but I think we're seeing some moderation. You know, what we're seeing now is people are becoming more mature in how they look at this, and there are things that, you know, a public cloud environment is outstanding at, there are things that it's, it's not as well suited for. And likewise, you're seeing that as people looking at private cloud technologies. And the key there really is, one of the things that makes a cloud environment so attractive is, I focus much more on managing applications than I do on managing hardware. The hardware just kind of happens for me. And that's really, I think, if you're really going to give people those private cloud environments that do that, it's the same thing. I, you know, if you look at our CP solution, it's a great example of that. I dial in, or dial in, there's my age showing up. I just connect in, I assign how I want the systems allocated to my applications, and the hardware just takes care of it. So That's the cloud. Yeah, so one of the real challenging things for customers is, once they modernize that platform, what about the applications on top of it? So there, there's so much happening in the database world. Uh, you talk about cloud native applications, AI, IoT, and edge solutions are you know, spending a lot of time for companies. Can you talk a little bit about uh, you know, how, how you're, what you're hearing from customers and how Lenovo is positioned? Yeah, I think this is where, why you're seeing some of that yeah. eight out of 10 coming the other direction. Yeah. If you've written for that kind of a world as the application, this is great for you. This is what you want. There are clearly a lot of legacy applications that weren't written with the cloud in mind, there was no cloud there. So they're not, they're much harder to deploy in that model. And so those are becoming, call it the more stubborn and obstinate part of the business. Now, that's still a great business for us to sell to and we're very happy to support customers and in many of those instances, it doesn't pay to redo it. But, um, you know, there'll be a long, long tail <laughs> of those kinds of applications where, you know, they're just not written with the cloud in mind. But anything new, generally is written with that kind of environment in mind. Okay, so are you saying the cloud native apps should run in public clouds or? They run everywhere. They, a well-written app will run private, public, or hybrid. How, how about AI? We, we've been hearing a lot this year for infrastructure for AI. Uh, you know, how, how yeah. does Lenovo the play The big there? challenge in AI is you have to sort of step back to its core principles. What's, what's AI about? Well, AI is about crunching a lot of numbers against a very large amount of data. So it becomes much more about where is the data than it is about you know, the actual algorithm or computation. That can run on almost anything, but if it's not local to the data, you got a problem. So that becomes more and more of, of how that problem is defined. So if the data is something that I'm pumping into a certain data center, whether it's cloud-based or my own, then that's typically where that AI algorithm will run. And if it's not, then you know, I've got to figure out how to get the data to where I want it. Yeah, I mean, a little bit of an oversimplification, we usually say there's usually some central place where you train, uh, but it needs to be out at the edge, whether, well, of course, autonomous yeah, vehicles is training, example. Training versus, is a very different problem right. than you call it, they call it inferencing, but basically, I've learned how to recognize speech. That takes a lot of computation. To recognize it doesn't take that much. <laughs> Learning is what takes all the effort. 
Well, I'm actually interested in, in, in the idea of recruiting and retaining the right kind of talent and how the kind of challenges you're having. I mean, this, this is, as we've discussed, a very fast-changing technology landscape. Are you able to find the right Well, people? this is you know, the biggest challenge in any technology industry, and since every business is getting a, you know, a, an IT component to it, it's becoming everyone's problem. And yes, I mean, as a, if, if you want to tell your kids where to go to school in, this is the place. It's going to be lots of jobs for a long time. So, you know, we face the same challenges everybody else faces in terms of recruiting the skills. Part of that is why having cloud as a deployment model is much better for you because it's, it is a lesser skill that's required to manage it and deal with it, and the complexities of it are simpler. Underneath the covers, you just need fewer people that really understand that, and that, that helps your skill problem. In terms of the, the last year at Lenovo Transform, you announced Think Agile. Can you talk a little bit about the, the portfolio of customers that you have developed and what, sure. kind, what you're seeing there? Yeah, I mean, we, we made a very conscious decision last year when we announced, we collected all the brands together, and if it was a building block, it's Think System, and if it's an integrated system or a cloud solution, it's, it's Think Agile, particularly integrated in our factory and deployed. And so, you know, we announced that, we deployed it with uh, Think Agile Advantage, which is a special service that goes with it that makes it even easier to sort of deal with changes and, and IT configurations. And, and we've, you know, been since then been very pleased with the kind of ramp that we've managed to get out of all our solutions in that bucket. And people really buy the idea of, hey, I'd like to get to a point where Lenovo will configure the thing in the factory, including the rack, maybe all the cables, everything. It's literally wheeled in, it's plugged in, I changed my password. <laughs> and I'm up. Whereas, you know, the old world was, you know, it shows up in 53 boxes over the course of, you know, 10 days. Then I spent two weeks trying to fit it all together. Pray I connected it correctly. And, you know, there you go. So it's a totally different model. Yeah. Uh, Peter, I wonder if you could help us connect the dots on some of the edge and IoT pieces. So, sure. uh, a lot of people we look at and say, okay, you've got the Motorola phones out there, you've got PC division, uh, but the data center group, how much does the data center group touch and interact with you know, the consumer and edge and uh, sure. other devices? So, to me, you know, there, there's multiple ways to look at IoT. And when you're Lenovo, you have a, our own view of it, just like every other company has. So clearly the Internet of Things, we sell a lot of things, we're going to do a lot of Internet of Things, right? <laughs> That's what the phone and our PC and smart devices and all that stuff is about. Yeah. But there's also a lot of, you know, we call it, all that data has to get processed by something. Guess who shows up when that happens? It's the data center group, right? So we view that as that's just an energy, whether the rest of Lenovo had all those things or not, that's just good for our business. It's just going to lift us with it. But more importantly, having that insight into what's happening at the, at, at the edge with all those devices, what's happening as customers are looking at, okay, one of the big things is now I'm starting to see movement of some of the data center to the edge. They're moving the, the computation, the server needs out and closer to where the thing, where the data is generated. That's a big opportunity for us. That's a whole new thing. And it's not something that you know, easily moves to the cloud because there's a reason why it moved closer to the data. So for us, it's a big opportunity and it's a huge one. So when you look at Lenovo, we all have our individual business groups view of what this thing means to me if I was an independent business. And then we layer across that then, okay, but here's what I can do with that opportunity because I do know how to make all these things, or I do know how to do that, and I do know how to do that. So that's our huge, you know, as YY calls it, our third wave. That's our real next, next, next key win. So you're all thinking about how, as the data center evolves, where your businesses fit yeah. in. Right now, the bulk of our business is clearly in the data center. Yeah. I would expect over time, you'll see more and more happen as these pieces of the edge come together. Great, well that's what we'll be talking about next year. Hopefully, <laughs> yes, absolutely. We have a lot of plans in place. I think you'll see a lot from us by this time next year. Yeah, but maybe give us a little bit view on that as, you know, Edge has been a very hot topic. You know, what do you see as some of the impediments and what will, you know, happen faster yeah. as you talk about that? I think the biggest impediment is, edge. the biggest impediment is, you know, unlike a lot of other problems in IT, there is no formula. So if I want to run a production system, you know, I'm going to go see Oracle or I'm going to go see SAP or I'm going to see someone else like that and, you know, they've got lots of consultants and know-how and boom, I just got to kind of pick between ways of doing it. When you're looking at big IoT solutions, there isn't one. Everything is, hmm, what am I going to instrument? Hmm, 
What am I going to get back as the information on that? Hmm. How am I going to justify the ROI on this? Hmm. How am I going to deploy this at scale because I don't know how to do that? You know, all of those are things that are going on. So what we're finding as we work, we work with a lot of uh, system integrators, people who help people understand proof of concepts and testing and studying. So we see certainly some areas, you know, those 20 billion things that YY talked about by 2020, those are going to places obviously, but businesses are really struggling with how do I do this at scale in my business? How do I drive that intelligent transformation that I know I've got to do because if I don't do it, my competitors are going to do it. And that's, that's to me where our opportunity sits and why it's interesting to be a Lenovo in that kind of a context. Great. Well, Peter Hortensius, thank you so much for coming on theCUBE. We've had a thank great time. Thank you so time. much. I enjoyed it very much. We'll have to do this again. Indeed. Thank you. Indeed. I'm Rebecca Knight for Stu Miniman. That wraps up Lenovo Transform 2018. We hope to see you back here next time on theCUBE.